Good afternoon, Mark Mix here from the National Right to Work Legal Defense Foundation, coming to you again with some exciting news and new developments here at the foundation with our legal program. Uh, we got an interesting case coming out of Texas that we're working on that has some, uh, well, it has some some skullduggery, we believe, uh, and some other elements that I think we need, we need to bring attention to because union officials often take advantage of the fact that employees don't know their rights or don't know where to find out about their rights. And sometimes union officials tend to push the, uh, the envelope a little too far when it comes to convincing people to do things they had not to do. So today I'm here with Alyssa Hazelwood, uh, an attorney at the foundation who's been with us for seven years. In fact, you're celebrating your seventh year anniversary in the month of January. Uh, you came to us. And you've been involved in some really interesting cases with the National Labor Relations Board, and, and you've been a kind of a broader practitioner than just the NLRB. But this case, this case has implications uh, under the National Labor Relations Act, an NLRB case, and it also has some, some implications as far as the Texas right to work law goes. So, Alyssa, can you tell us a little bit about the case and what's happening here? And, and what's, I mean, I know we just got it started with it, mm -hmm. but some of the facts in the case are pretty interesting. Yes. So um, we filed a, an NLRB charge on behalf of Jessica Hafner. Um, she's an employee for Kroger in Texas. And uh, at her orientation, um, her Kroger orientation, there was a, a por portion of the orientation where um, the union came in, um, handed her and the other employees, the new employees, a pamphlet. Um, and said they had to be, they had to fill out a membership application form and a union dues deduction authorization form. Yeah. Um, Ms. Hafner actually knew about her rights and asked, you know, if, how do I exercise those rights? And the union representative um, informed her that she still had to fill out that membership application, but if she put zero in the dues deduction amount, mm -hmm. um, that would um, effectuate her rights under the act. Yeah. Listen, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Was she required to fill out that membership document? No. 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 Okay. Um, employees never have to fill out a membership application or a dues checkoff authorization as a condition of their employment. Yeah. Um, so she filled out her, she, she did what the union um, organizer said. She turned in that application with the zero um, amount in the dues deduction um, authorization form. She uh, started her work at Kroger and uh, she noticed dues, had, dues were coming out of her paycheck. Despite the fact she put zero in the amount column. Exactly. How could that happen? So she, she <laughs> wondered that and she got a copy of that dues deduction form. And uh, when she got it back, that dues deduction form had been altered. The zero had been crossed out and uh, uh, an amount of the dues amount had been added to the form. How, I mean, who would do that? Um, would it be the HR department? I mean, obviously you don't know. We don't know we who don't did know. it. Is that something that can be discovered in this process or something that can be investigated as to who would do this? That's definitely something that uh, we're looking into. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that we filed charges against Kroger and the union. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're hoping that that comes out in the investigation of the charge. Yeah. Let me, let's talk about the Kroger piece of it just for a minute, because if I understand the facts in the case, part of this pamphlet that she got as kind of the onboarding process was a statement by Kroger encouraging her to join a union or to participate with the union. Just, I, I, I don't want to use the wrong word because I know that means something in, you know, in a legal case, right. but there was definitely a Kroger statement that talked about why they thought she should be in the union. That, that's right. Okay. So um, in, in the Kroger charge, we have an allegation that they um, supported you know, encouraged union support, which violates the National Labor Relations Act um, because the, the employees should be free to choose whether or not they want to join the union or support the union. Um, under That's their right under the act. Yeah, and they have the right to refrain, allegedly, <laughs> right. Well, so so let's say this. Let's say Kroger, on the, in the onboarding packet, a Kroger representative was there and a union representative was there, and the union representative said, here's all this paperwork, and the Kroger representative came in and said, we don't want you to join the union. Oh. What would happen then? The union would definitely file an unfair labor <laughs> of practice they charge would. against Kroger. Yeah, exactly. And that would be illegal activity under the National Labor Relations Act. But also, we know, going back into the, what, the 1930s, 1920s, under the so-called yellow dog contract mm -hmm. process, where the union was saying, or the business was saying, you got to join my union, or you got to avoid joining the union, we correct that. But now we're in a position here where Kroger's saying, we're encouraging you to do something, or, I, 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 I want to be careful with the word, but is that a proper word, encourage? Um, I would I would characterize it as encourage. Um, 
I don't think that's exactly what it said in that pamphlet, but yeah. but that is something I think that's what we how we characterize yeah. it in the charge. Okay, so we filed the, the we filed the charge. Mm -hmm. What's next? Uh, what's next is the NLRB is going to investigate, and uh, we hope that they issue a complaint against both Kroger and the union. Yeah, well, that's exciting. Well, what's exciting about the case, and I think what draw, drew my attention to it, was the fact that she had an understanding of what her rights were, and she made that obvious to the union organizer. And, and even at that point, when whether the union organizer knew what her rights were or not, it's another question. I assume we assume they do, um, but the fact that it ended up this way uh, is is makes it a very interesting case, and it shows, I think, on. Unfortunately, that the pressure that goes on in a situation like this and union officials giving false information or giving, you know, somewhat not completely factually true information is something I think workers are up against all the time. And that's why we're here doing this work. That's right. And the union did not in, um, didn't inform any of the employees about whether, you know, at the time they seek to obligate um, employees under the act, you know, they have to tell people about their rights and they did not do that. Uh, Ms. Hafner was... Um, had the courage to stand up and, and in, ask to enforce her rights, and, and unfortunately, we're still here. Yeah. Well, that's what's great about the foundation's work is the fact when an employee has the courage to stand up and, and understand or try to exercise their rights, we're here to help them. And in a case like this, um, you know, Jessica is going to have Alyssa walking with her through this whole process. So we're not sure what the National Labor Relations Board is going to do. We're going to keep you posted on this because this is one of the really kind of bread and butter cases that the foundation litigates day in and day out on behalf of individual employees. And we can only do that, frankly, is because of donors like you who support our work and allow us to provide these free legal services services to folks like Jessica and allow Alyssa to, to help them exercise their rights in the American workplace. So, Alyssa, thank you for giving us an update on this case. Hopefully, we'll be back shortly, not too long, I hope, and we'll have a really good outcome here. We'll, we'll basically punish the unions for, for not exercising the rights properly or, or enforcing her rights properly, and then maybe even Kroger, perhaps, in uh, getting away from this and not putting their thumb on the scale in any way, shape, or form. That's right. All right. Thanks for your help, and thanks for the update. All right. Thank you. All right.